Fuel cell electric vehicles, FCEVs, which use hydrogen as a fuel source, and battery electric vehicles, BEVs, which rely solely on battery power or electricity, are the industry's two options as the future of automotive power shifts away from the internal combustion engines and toward electric vehicle technology. But which one stands out the most? Is it the new FCEVs or BEVs that Tesla belongs to? You're curious, aren't you? Stay tuned. Before we go any further, I'd appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for doing that. Let's get started. What exactly is an FCEV and how does it work? FCEVs are electric vehicles that run on hydrogen fuel cells rather than batteries. An FCEV's heart is the fuel cell system. Electrochemical reactions between hydrogen and oxygen injected into the FCEV hydrogen tanks generate energy. As a byproduct, only pure distilled water is generated. FCEVs utilize this electricity for traction and rely on the battery for auxiliary tasks like starting and storing energy gained by regenerative braking. The key distinction between FCEVs and BEVs is the energy source. FCEVs, in contrast to BEVs, rely on the energy stored in the vehicle's fuel cells, which have a number of advantages over batteries. As long as fuel is available to power the fuel cell, it can generate energy. This is one of the most significant advantages of fuel cells, but does it match up to Tesla EVs and other aspects? Let's find out. Production costs. To create a so-called hydrogen economy, massive factories slash refineries, pipelines, vehicles, storage facilities, compressors, hydrogen gas stations, and other infrastructure must be built. If you haven't noticed, this is a carbon copy of the current oil and gas infrastructure. On the other hand, Tesla electric vehicles have a ready-made infrastructure in the form of the electrical grid. Electricity is available to everyone who lives and works in sophisticated economies. Yes, our grid is old and needs replacement, but it serves us well today. The multi-billion dollar hydrogen infrastructure would have to be constructed from the ground up and would require lots of funds. Therefore, a higher cost of production will be needed when compared with Tesla EVs. Vehicles with hydrogen tanks are bulky. Because hydrogen has a low volumetric energy density, storing enough on board presents issues regarding weight, volume, kinetics, safety, and cost. To maximum volumetric energy density, hydrogen can only be held under high pressure at extremely low temperatures as a liquid or in metal hydride systems. The most common method for storing hydrogen in automobiles is compressed hydrogen. Compressed hydrogen tanks and passenger FCEVs are bulky and take up a lot of space. This is a fault in the current generation of hydrogen fuel cell electric cars. Heavy hydrogen tanks may be replaced in the future by hydrogen metal or non-metal hydrides. This is just getting started, with hydrogen evaporation still being a major technical hurdle to overcome. Toyota uses 700 bar, that's 10,000 PSI pressurized tanks, while Honda and Nissan use 300 bar, or 5,000 PSI tanks. The public is concerned about the safety of the 10,000 PSI composite tanks, despite the fact that they've been proven to be quite safe as required by numerous regulatory standards. Furthermore, the tank proportions necessitate more space than standard gasoline tanks. Fuel cell vehicle deployment would need to be accomplished by supporting infrastructure. FCEVs will not be financially feasible unless buyers are confident that refueling stations will be easily accessible. As a result, fuel cell car adoption should be accompanied by supporting infrastructure. According to H2 Tools, there were over 492 refueling stations worldwide by the end of 2021. Japan had 141 stations, followed by South Korea at 122, and Germany with 91. Even though some automakers now sell FCEVs, the technology is still in its infancy. On the list are Honda, Hyundai, and Toyota, to name a few. More FCEVs are on the horizon thanks to automakers' commitment to expanding hydrogen filling stations and hydrogen-powered vehicles. While all today's fuel cell vehicles are considered mass-market production vehicles, none are available outside of California. Performance. We could compare Tesla Model 3 and FCEV Toyota Mirai. Electric vehicles such as the Model 3 and the Mirai are two different sorts. Unlike a standard battery-powered vehicle, a fuel cell electric vehicle generates electricity on board using hydrogen fuel. Despite that, the Mirai has the feel of a battery electric vehicle because of its electric drive motor's fast, lag-free acceleration. 
Although the Mirai's acceleration is smooth, it's not exceptionally speedy. Due to its well-timed power delivery, drivers will have no trouble merging onto the motorway or passing other cars. But this isn't the car to choose if you're seeking a quick start. Toyota claims a 0 to 60 mile per hour time in 9.2 seconds. The Mirai makes a modest 182 horsepower and 221 foot-pounds of torque. On the other side, the Tesla Model 3 is one of the fastest sedans ever tested. We hit 60 miles per hour in 3.1 seconds while driving a performance variant with 450 horsepower and 471 foot-pounds of torque. A long-range variation took an extra 0.9 seconds to hit the target. The Mirai has precise steering and feels grounded in turns, but the Model 3 is my favorite canyon carver of the two, thanks to its great agility and low body roll. Can hydrogen fuel cells become the preferred EV technology? Several studies, including one from Argonne National Laboratory, have shown that producing and using hydrogen for fuel cells is more environmentally benign than charging battery electric vehicles using grid electricity. Wind and solar energy, along with decomposition of plant materials, could be used to generate hydrogen. However, these processes take longer and cost more money. So, who will emerge victorious in the EV war? For the time being, Tesla EVs have the upper hand in terms of performance, cost of production, innovation, and inventiveness compared to other FCEV automobiles now on the market. However, in the long run, and I mean over the next two to three decades, battery and fuel cell technologies will coexist due to their evident similarities. With BEVs being better suited to short range and small vehicles, and FCEVs being more suited to medium to large and long range vehicles. So what's your thought about FCEVs matching up against Tesla EVs? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching today's video all the way to the end. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, and switch on notifications so you don't miss out on any of our incredible videos. We'll see you in the next video.